In today's video, I would like to talk to you about four heroes. This is a subject that's largely been ignored here, YouTube, and the media. Over the last year, the media has had absolutely no problem reporting to you the story of tired sailors or poorly trained servicemen, incompetent, unable to perform their duties because of one excuse or another. Well, today, we're going to tell you the real story of U.S. servicemen. Staff Sergeant Brian Black, Staff Sergeant Dustin Wright, Staff Sergeant Jeremiah Johnson, and Sergeant LaDavid Johnson were killed on duty in Nigeria in an ambush. The man on the far right was the last to be recovered, having fought until the last, having been shot 18 times, continuing to fight. He's from Miami Gardens, Florida. He and a 12-member Special Forces unit were ambushed by 50 militants, reports have said at least 100. U.S. Green Parades were accompanied by a force of some 30 nationals as they hunted an ISIS leader tied to Al-Qaeda. A military investigation into the events of the ambush revealed that Johnson died under heavy fire, taking cover in an undergrowth rather than be taken in captivity or through close-range execution. The discovery of a number of shell casings found near Johnson's body appeared to show that he died fighting to the end. He had been hit by fire from Soviet-made M4 rifles, stolen rifles. He had his equipment and boots taken from him, but he was still wearing his uniform. The four U.S. troops and four other soldiers were killed as they stopped in a village to gather food and water. The area where these patrols had been searching for the senior militant figure and gathering intelligence was easily accessible to Islamist groups. The U.S. military had said it believes it is likely someone tipped off the attackers to the presence of U.S. forces there. The U.S. military has said it believes that it is likely someone tipped off the attackers to the presence of U.S. forces there. Hmm. You see, that's interesting. So they were made someone stabbed him in the back. See, it takes us to a different place in the video today. See, here's the uh, president of Nigeria who was cordially welcomed into the White House after this happened. Brought here. Kind of strange. A lot of people think he's our friend. But he's uh, shaking other hands as well. So it's hard to say just in pictures whether this is the real Buhari or is this the real Buhari? Hmm. I wonder if we can find something that might give us a clue. Well, Mr. Buhari has been in politics and in the military in his country for quite some time. And so there's quite a few quotes and a quite a bit of information about him out there. In fact, after the September 11th attacks in 2001, he was quoted as saying, I will continue to show openly and inside me the total commitment to the Sharia movement that is sweeping all over Nigeria. He then added, God willing, we will not stop the agitation for the total implementation of the Sharia in the country. Those are his words. I'm not making that allegation about the man. Those are the things he said. Do you want to read the history of this man? Where he comes from? What he's about? You're welcome to do it for yourself. Now I know a lot of people are going to say, well, he talked about not, you know, about saving the Christians, about saving the Christians, really? You see, there's this thing called takia. 
and it makes it possible that anyone who would agitate for Sharia, being Islamist, is perfectly allowed to and encouraged to lie on behalf of Islam. And a lot of people don't know this. Muslims lie when it's in their interest to do so. And Allah will not hold them accountable for lying when it's beneficial to the cause of Islam. They can lie without any guilt or fear of accountability or retribution. To save their lives, to reconcile a husband and wife, to persuade a woman into a bedroom, and to facilitate one on his journey. They can even disavow Islam as long as in their hearts they don't believe it. You see, there was another God present there as well. This is Mr. Bahari shaking another hand. These are uh, Chevron officials. So it makes you wonder. It really does. Where his allegiances really lie it looks like he can be friends with just about anybody when it serves him. Of course, soldiers, sailors, airmen, and marines, we don't get to ask these questions. We just serve. And I guess this is true. That uh, must have known what he signed up for. fighting for big oil. In Africa, that's what all of us sign up for, of course, when we go in and decide to serve our country. We uh, know that no matter what, we are going to do what we're told. We're going to follow orders. See, I would have liked to shake this guy's hand. I would have liked to tell him thank you, but we won't get to. No one will ever get that opportunity now. Why? Because he was ambushed. Someone tipped off the Islamic State as to the presence of U.S. soldiers. So you have to wonder about these guys here. you got to wonder, would they agitate for the promotion of Islam, the sweeping across Nigeria. Let me get that quote again to see if I can... I don't want to misquote the guy. I will continue to show openly and inside me the total commitment to the Sharia movement that is sweeping all over Nigeria. God willing, we will not stop the agitation for the total implementation of the Sharia in the country. I wonder if these guys would agree with that statement. What do you think? I mean, do you think they would be allowed to use Takiya to achieve their ends? Shot 18 times. Fighting to the end. The story of four U.S. servicemen who lost their lives in defense of big oil so that we can have dictators in the White House. It's going to meet with another dictator soon here, apparently in Singapore, who has the blood of millions, he and his father, on their hands. I wonder what the financial incentive there is going to be as well. It is strange. There are certain dictators, I guess, in the world that are perfectly fine and other dictators that aren't. You know, I've never heard of Venezuela pursuing nuclear weapons. I've never heard of any U.S. servicemen being ambushed in Venezuela. Have you? I've never heard of Venezuela attacking its neighbors. I've never heard of Venezuela promoting Sharia. Have you? 
I want you to remember these faces. And when you see that plane on the tarmac at Dover, and you see the coffins roll out the back with the flags over them, having returned from service somewhere in South America, dead, having quote unquote known what they've signed up for. I want you to remember this day. And I want you to remember what's really important. And the next time you see a story talking about how our guys don't know what they're doing, about how they're lazy or unmotivated or tired, I want you to remember this. Because that's never going to stand here. Not at this channel. We're going to tell you the truth, whether it hurts or not. Godspeed to all these servicemen. Like, share, subscribe.